Baby, you went crazy on this one. Okay, hey guys, um, it's been a while. Uh, I think the last time I tried making this video, or the first part that I made actually, was about three-ish, maybe four weeks ago. I don't really remember. I've been super busy with school. Um, it's just also been super, super cloudy, so I haven't been able to get the opportunity to come out and photograph. And today, actually, I was leaving this escape room that I got to do for one of my Sherlock Holmes classes. And um, as I was driving, I kind of looked up, as I always do, um, and I saw that there was finally stars. Uh, there was finally stars. It's been, I think, maybe two and a half weeks, maybe three, four weeks since the last time I honestly shot, um, or when I tried to pull or align the scope, was the last time that I actually saw any stars. So right when I saw the stars were out, I had to take the opportunity to come and try again, you know, make the part two of the video. So hopefully today um, we can try and get something. The moon is out, so that's nice. So I mean, at the end of the day, if I'm not able to get any deep sky or anything, I'll at least be able to shoot you guys some pictures of the moon. Um, but right now, Orion is kind of over, over here to my right. You guys won't be able to see with the camera, but, um, if I'm able to actually polar align the scope, um, I could possibly get like maybe 30, 40 minutes of Orion and at least get like a semi okay picture of the nebula. But for now, I'm gonna set everything up. I'm gonna walk you guys through the entire process as I didn't last time, but this time I'm gonna walk you guys through the entire process. And we'll see how it goes. Okay, so the telescope is now ready to begin the auto align process. I'm gonna walk you guys through everything that I do. Um, and it's just basically gonna be a focus on the hand controller right now. And the first step that we have to do is basically tell the telescope uh, what time it is, what time zone, um, what state, you know, all that stuff. So the telescope gets a good sense of direction of where it is like on the earth. And step two will be finding the North Star aligning it with the North Star, and then doing three other different types of constellations. So that way this, the telescope can map out the sky. And um, from there we should be rolling. So uh, hopefully this turns out good and this isn't a failure like the last video. Okay, so this is the hand controller. It might be a little bit too bright, um, but basically it just says um, advanced GT, um, press enter to begin aligning process, blah, 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 blah. Okay, set index mount to, okay, so basically, I don't wanna move the camera, but I have to have the telescope. There's two index lines up here and I have to align them um, perfectly. So that is a, a, that's good there. And then we'll press enter. Okay, and then I am in Chicago, Illinois. It's cause I was kind of messing with this. Okay, no, last time it didn't have me do this. Last time it actually asked me the time. Okay, let's see, hiccups. Okay, so I managed to get it. I set the time up. I had a little bit of a hiccup, um, but we got it. So now it's just asking me time zone and everything. So Central USA, um, I have to put the date. So right now it is April, f wait, April 11th, uh, 2022. Okay, enter. And now it says uh, scope setup. So set up time site, don't know what that is. Oh no, that's actually what I just did, sorry. Okay, um, mount settings, auto rates. Okay, um, so yeah, I think that's it. Now we just click align. Or right, let me see, let me go back. Okay, so we're gonna press enter. The index is good. Okay, that's good. And then, yup, we're in Aurora, Illinois. Uh, select alignment, two star alignment. Let's see what, what there's a one star alignment. Quick align, last alignment, solar system, two star, 
We're gonna do the two star alignment. Um, I just heard it's better. I mean, it makes sense if you were aligning it with two stars. Okay, so now I'm gonna have to scroll through this menu and get my app and see what stars are the easiest for me to, uh, to um, look at, I guess. Okay, so actually I forgot to do one step. I have to polar align the scope before I do this, before I select my two stars. Um, so I'm gonna do that. I can't really show you guys because um, you can't really see through the polar scope with no light. But inside this polar scope, there's like a map of the sky right now with the uh, Polaris being in the center, center and then the Big Dipper, Cassiopeia, a few other stars being in the surrounding. And I basically have to match up the night sky with the scope. And that basically has like this orientation locked. And then I'm gonna basically program the location of the two stars when I'm doing the alignment into the telescope. So that way, whenever I choose whatever I wanna look at, the uh, scope knows exactly where to look. So I'm gonna do that um, for now. And then um, I'll update you guys once the polar alignment is done. So hopefully everything goes smooth like last time. I did bring the wrench to loosen this bolt to be able to move my mount up and down. And then this one's fine, moving left and right. So everything should go smoothly. Uh, I had definitely missed the window to photograph the Orion Nebula. So I'm going to try to shoot for something else. I'm going to go on uh, Google, see what uh, galaxies are out right now. And um, who knows, maybe I accidentally get a... Uh, galaxy instead of a nebula so we'll see okay so i managed to set everything up um i have the pol like, i have polaris pole lines at the center of the scope so now i'm doing the two star alignment process and i'm going to be focusing on uh, my first star which is called capella i believe that's how you pronounce it don't don't quote me on that i'm not too sure but i'm going to basically be moving the scope to capella and i'll show you how i do that so basically i have this uh controller which helps me move the telescope um, and I'm going to be slewing it to the left because that's basically where this one is. I have to just keep moving it and right when it's at the center of my telescope and it's focused, I press enter, um, which will lock that position of the star in. So it's pretty cool. I don't know if you can see the scope moving. You might be able to hear it. Um, and the easiest way for me to do this is that I actually have my friend Jacob here with a laser pointer and he points at the star and I just try to find it with my scope. And then once I have it like uh, in the scope and it's centered, I'll focus this and I'll attach the camera and uh, do the same thing for the next star. So I'll uh, update you guys once I have both stars aligned um, or if I have any hiccups, I'll let you know too. I managed to align it with uh, the three stars. I did a calibration star as well. And I actually just pointed it to Messier 82, uh, otherwise known as uh, the Cigar Galaxy. So, um, Maybe it's not the best idea to start off with a galaxy to try my first time astrophotography, but um, most nebulas are kind of down right now. I mean, that could be a lie as well. I haven't really looked at the catalog, but um, I'm going to attach my camera right now and see uh, what happens. I'm going to just take like an exposure shot. It's actually tracking right now. So um, maybe it works. Maybe it doesn't. Um, we'll see. I'm going to attach everything and just see how it goes. We'll run some test shots and if not, I'll try something else and also show you guys like how it uh, how it moves and stuff. But for now, uh, I'm gonna set up the camera and see what happens. So I'll update you guys in a sec. Okay, so I tried a uh, Messier 82, which is uh, the Cigar Galaxy. Um, I saw that like the stars that were in there were uh, out of focus. So basically what I did now to focus the telescope a little bit better is I pointed it at the moon and I focused the telescope to get me like super clear images of the moon. So I already took pictures of the moon, which I'll show uh, probably at the end of the video. Uh, they came out really cool. They had the moon looks super clear. So I know you guys are gonna enjoy those photos. Um, but now we're gonna move on to the next step and try to photograph the cigar galaxy or a nebula or something, just anything that I can just try. Maybe a nebula will be a lot easier than a galaxy. So I'm gonna do one more test run at the cigar galaxy and if that doesn't work i'll probably start trying um some nebulas or some other deep sky photography things like uh maybe dual stars i don't know just something so right now it's just you know just just learning just messing around with it so um yeah i'll update you guys on the next part that we get um we'll see what happens from here i was not able to get any of the nebulas i think they might be too deep for me um so what i have to do now is basically I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to update this rig. I'm gonna have to buy a few more components. Um, I'm assuming I'm missing some form of magnification for the camera um, because 
it's locking onto the targets and I'm getting the targets that I'm supposed to, to look at. So the polar alignment's actually really good and the star tracking is really good for my uh, first time doing this. I'm really good, so super happy with that. Um, I was hoping that I was gonna be able to get some pictures of any type of, of uh, nebula. I was really hoping to catch Orion, but um, it took me a little longer, but now I know exactly what I need to do. So the next time I come and try this, it's gonna be a lot easier. Maybe I can do it a lot quicker. So that's nice. So um, for now, I'm just gonna show you guys how this telescope kind of works. Um, I'm gonna photograph some uh, more photos of the moon and show you guys at the end, but it's a uh, really simple and it's a great form of uh, being able to look at um, space objects, you know, look into the cosmos with a telescope like this, because you don't need to move it and adjust it constantly like a classical Dobsonian, like the one I have in my room. Um, this is actually really nice because you're able to just move the telescope with a controller, which makes everything so much easier. So I'll uh, run you guys through all of that. Um, my process of shooting the, uh, the moon, just with some basic settings on the camera as well. I'll show you guys all of that and um, add like a nice little clip of a, uh, the moon pictures that I take at the end of the video. I'm gonna show you guys basically how the telescope runs and um, photographs on the moon. So um, these uh, dials right here basically move this telescope. So I'll show you guys. Um, I have to, I can't show you guys the moon through the GoPro, but um, I'm gonna move the telescope to point at the moon. So you kind of have to watch it with like your eyeballs and aim it. So, um, I could just like type it in the moon right here and then it'll point to the moon, but I wanna show you guys, give you guys a little bit of action and show you guys like how this works. It's really cool. I hope you guys can see the telescope actually moving itself. So the way that I do it is I'll constantly be moving it and I'll be looking in the finder scope. So right here, I actually found the moon in the finder scope, which is this little scope right here. And then I'll adjust it to get to the center of the finder scope. Uh, which I am about to be at. Okay, so the moon is now in the at the center of the finder scope. So I'm gonna turn my camera on and make sure that the moon is in the center of the camera. So I can see uh, that it is basically. Um, ooh, the camera's about to die. So now I'm gonna lower I have another battery, so it's good. So I'm gonna lower my exposure. Um, let's see. And that looks pretty clear and focused to me as well. I hope that this is as focused as it gets. Um, I'm gonna actually try to focus it a little more. This is the focus knob right here that I'm playing around with. And I can actually zoom in on the surface of the moon and focus it even more to make sure that I'm really, really focused. Okay, that's actually really good. Okay, that's a good one. So I'm taking pictures of the moon right now. And they look um, insane. Okay, so as you can see here, the moon is um, basically centered in my frame. Yeah, don't don't mind the battery sign. It'll it'll be fine. It's just because it's really cold. Um, but. You can see how I'm moving the camera with the controller. So if I click down and moves it, it's it's a little funny, but it's just because it's uh, tilted at a weird axis. So um, there, my moon is uh, pretty centered. I like that shot. So I'm gonna take the photo. Um, and I know on the GoPro, it doesn't look the best, um, but I'm sure that when I post these, like well, when I uh, collect these photos and edit them a little bit, it'll look really crisp. So I'm gonna take like a few shots to maybe uh, stack the image and get like a really nice photo of the moon. Hey. 
And I do have an intervalometer, but um, it's uh, at home. I forgot it. And basically what an intervalometer is, is it's basically a little control that hooks up to the camera where I don't have to touch the camera so it won't shake it, um, which allows for steadier shots. And I can also do longer exposures, things like that. Um, but this is fine to be honest. So I'm gonna take a, a good amount of shots and you're supposed to just do this to really get like the colors of the moon to pop. Um, and then you can make a really, really high definition picture with reduced noise. Um, yeah, and it ends up being beautiful, but I really like how you guys can see it. So I can show you guys again, like, look, like if I move it really to the right, it goes down. So bring it back in frame. Let's see, and then we're gonna center it one more time. That's nice. Okay, picture. Picture. Okay, so as you can see, I did put on a little hat because it's uh, really cold. I tried to show my breath last time. Maybe you can see it again. Like, <sighs> Basically, it's really cold. And um, today was a huge success. I'm really happy with uh, what happened today. We got a lot farther than uh, what we did in the last episode. Um, basically last episode, I was just trying to polar align it and really couldn't figure it out. I didn't know how the controller worked. I didn't know how uh, to set the time zone, to set my location. I didn't know how to do any of that. So I basically went online, started reading a lot, reading the manuals, uh, reading people's experiences with, the, with this type of setup. And I finally figured out how to do it. So I practiced in my room, you know, because there wasn't any stars for me to, to, to practice with. So I just practiced in my room, like setting up the time, learning how to use the controller. And uh, it really paid off because today I was able to do everything pretty quickly, not as fast as I wanted to. So hopefully next time I can uh, maybe catch the Orion Nebula before it goes below the horizon. I don't have the biggest uh, window of time from when it gets dark to when it gets uh, till Orion is below the horizon. Orion usually sets below the horizon at this time of the year, around 10.30, 10.40, the latest. And that's just the nebula, so just the Orion nebula. The entire constellation, I don't know, I think Betelgeuse, which is the uppermost star, maybe an hour later, so like around 11.30. So with today, um, I did learn a lot, which is awesome. Super, super happy with that. And uh, it was still successful for me, you know, because this is a big learning process for me. I've never shot anything a deep sky. So I'm still learning. Um, I'm pretty sure that what I did learn, like one of the biggest key things that I learned today is that in the telescope, I do need to get some form of magnification, I think. So I'm going to post some stuff on some forums, ask some questions around, see what my setup is missing. Because when I did try to shoot uh, the Crab Nebula, um, some other nebulas that I should be able to get with this scope. Um, I should have seen at least like some form of picture or some form of cloud, but I didn't see anything. So I'm pretty sure that I need to get some form of magnification. Um, but the moon pictures looked really, really, really nice. So super happy about that. Um, I'm going to edit them. I'm basically going to stack the images. Maybe I think that's what I do with moon editing. I don't know how it really works when you take moon pictures, but I'm going to be doing that. Um, Maybe I'll add the editing process onto the YouTube video too. Once I get home, I'm probably gonna do that. So maybe I'll uh, actually add like the way that I use uh, Adobe, um, like the Photoshop and Lightroom to edit these photos. Uh, that might actually be something cool. So yeah, I'm probably gonna add that. Um, but yeah, thank you for uh, taking this ride for me again. Thank you for joining the vlog and uh, episode two of trying to photograph the Orion Nebula. Uh, again, in terms of trying to photograph the Orion Nebula, uh, I failed, but in terms of learning how to use this scope, did a really good job. So really, really happy with everything that I did today. And hopefully in episode three, we finally get the Orion Nebula. I'm gonna try to see if I can order the missing components that I need. Uh, so that way, um, by the next time I try to shoot the Orion Nebula, I can get it. So for me, that might not be for a while because my finals are coming up. I'm still a, I'm a college student. I major in physics. I want to do astrophysics. Ah, what a surprise. But I want to do astrophysics. So my finals are actually coming up. It's the first week of May. 
Uh, right now it's April 11th, so I am gonna be studying for finals. Um, and I did check like the two week forecast for weather and it does look like it's gonna be pretty ugly. So I don't know if I'm gonna have too much time to photograph uh, anything to be honest. But um, if I do get some time, then I'll come out and try it again, hopefully. Um, and also one thing to make you guys excited to watch is um, soon uh, Saturn, Jupiter, some of the planets are going to be out and this telescope is going to be amazing for that, you know, I don't need like uh, some form of magnification. So once that's out, I'm going to be photographing Saturn and Jupiter because Saturn and Jupiter look crazy through a telescope i don't know if you guys have ever seen it if you guys hang out with me and you guys have hung out with me odds are you probably have you know i show everyone um with my Dobsonian what saturn and jupiter looks like but you can see the rings you can see a lot of detail so it's super super cool so i'm super excited to photograph that but for now yeah um i don't know if i'm going to continue this i probably will i probably won't um in terms of editing and adding that onto this video too uh but Thank you so much for joining this vlog. Uh, if you made it this far, maybe hit a like on the video, comment, it, comment on it, uh, giving me suggestions of things to photograph if you guys know, or if you have any questions, just put a comment in. And also hit that subscribe button. Uh, I would really appreciate it. I'm just out here trying to vlog and document my hobby um, and share it with you guys. You know, it's something that's so beautiful. I feel like the cosmos are really forgotten about. People are so focused in their problems that are very earthly and forget that there's like beauty and wonder in the skies above us. You know, there's things to look out that people don't really realize are there. So I'm trying to do that. That's my hobby. It's my passion. So um, that's why I'm doing this YouTube channel, you know, to document this, to be able to look back and just to share my work with you guys. So if you made it this far, I really appreciate you. Thank you so much. Like I said, hit that like, hit that subscribe, comment with any questions or any ideas of uh, YouTube videos. Thank you so much.